Ken Bogham's witness to the Bahamas mass stranding was the pivot point of public interest on the phenomenon. His work has been praised by scientists and activists alike. If it hadn't been for Dr. Balcom being on Abaco and seeing with his own eyes all the strandings and realizing something was wrong, I don't think we would have ever gotten to the bottom of this. It'd just be another mystery. In March 2000, uh, it was big news everywhere. It was a, a big news story uh, about uh, a, a number of uh, whales that washed ashore in the Bahamas. And I was frankly happy to see that in the news stories, a guy named Ken Balcom was in his research station at the same time. And it was the first time that I had any hope that maybe we were going to get some answers to the classic question, why did these animals strand? On the morning of March 15, 2000, awoke to uh, have one whale that we'd been looking at before uh, stranded right in front of the house, and very nearby there were half a dozen others, and uh, by the end of the day we had discovered there were about 17 or 16 whales stranded uh, all around the northern Bahamas. and. We determined ultimately that this was due to uh, naval sonar. It's fairly obvious what happened in the uh, sonar incident. It's uh, rapid ascent, bubble formation in the blood and tissues, and uh, gas emboli, gas and fat emboli forming uh, to block their systems. You can see it. Well, the regular sonar on the destroyers is the 53 Charlie mid-frequency sonar, and there's also a 56 sonar system that's a little higher mid-frequency. And these are standard on many U.S. naval combatants as well as uh, similar equipment on foreign destroyers. The idea is to find submarines, powerful sonar systems. It's the... Uh, a uh, newer generation, which came online in the 1963, I believe. And uh, since then, we've been observing around the world, especially around uh, naval bases and areas where exercises are conducted, that uh, there's this remarkable coincidence of everything trying to get out of the water when they use the gear, and a lot of stranding and a lot of death. I think it's it's safe to say the military is going to do what what the military does, and they, they, they don't they don't tell the truth. That's not their job. Their job is to keep weapon systems, defense systems, uh, from at least how they work and, and why they have things in place. This device was actually placed on the the snout, the, the uh, rostrum of a dolphin, if you will, and they were trained in the program that I was with, the swimmer nullification program, to seek out any enemy swimmers or divers that might be in the area, go out, bang that diver, it would be spring released, a 45 bullet would come out of this hole, this would flow to the surface, the dolphin would swim off. Uh, they need to keep those kind, that kind of information out of enemy hands. Um, it is no secret that the Navy used to use whales, birds, and, and, and mammals of the sea for target practice. So to you know, have any doubt that their concern about marine mammals and the safety of marine mammals rises to the level that the general public has about marine mammals um, is to be naive. Uh, the Navy is very likely fully aware of the negative impact um, in my own uh, experience working with the Navy in San Diego. There were many times that we were ordered out of the water, all divers out of the water. The announcement would come over the PA because sonar testing was going to be done in San Diego Harbor. My concern at the time was what about the captive dolphins and sea lions that were in the Navy Dolphin Program? Well, that the uh, uh, very, very conservative approach and sometimes rather uh, outdated approach that the National Marine Fisheries investigators have taken does not reveal the nature of the problem. Well, the problem is there really is no stranding network. The problem is that the network has just basically 
collapsed. It's fallen apart. There never was a really solid network, and what a little bit of it's left is basically just groups of concerned people responding. Most of, most of it comes down to, I think, is the people that are in charge of the network are all aware that the network has serious problems, but they're not willing to do what it takes to correct them. They would rather just roll on with the status quo, basically keeping an act up that the stranding network is operating properly. Everybody only reacts during the next stranding. Everybody is waiting for the next stranding because that's when everybody goes crazy and they go nuts and they go get their donations and they get the money and they get this and they get that and they get the TV time and the newspapers. That's not what it's all about. It's about having a viable network that can work well into the next, you know, decade. Not about the next stranding next week or next month. It needs to be fixed. The federal government is spending a lot of money, millions and millions of our tax dollars every year to keep these people employed that are supposedly running the stranding network and the National Marine Fishery Service. That money needs to be better spent. When I ask them what's the problem, they always say, well, we don't have enough money and we don't have enough manpower. We need people and money. And I say, okay, how many people do you need and how much money do you need? And the answer is always the same. Well, we don't know. It's definitely a subject that we got to deal with, and I don't feel that it's been dealt with very well so far. It's mostly been denied or uh, obfuscated, you know, hidden amongst uh, other issues. And, you know, unfortunately, our, our public attention span is kind of short. When there's a stranding, it comes up and gets talked about, and two weeks later, something else is happening on the news. There are attempts being made to uh, bring this to the attention of Congress and, and uh, educate the public and, and find independent uh, uh, investigators to look into this problem and really figure out what to do about it. We seem to be the only ones that are, that are speaking out for these creatures, even though there's a federal law that's supposed to be there to protect them. Uh, there are certain things that are allowed in the name of national defense, and um, politics certainly play a role in this. There's certainly concern if you're putting sound in the water that has been linked to, to whale strandings, and it's and then what's your balance against national defense? And I don't have the answer there. Well, I think the public and Congress have to be better educated about just what is going on, and uh, step take steps to mitigate. We we. Um, can't just destroy wildlife in the name of national security or practice. Well, it's a beautiful cre cre creature, and you know, like God's gift creation, you know, and I'm just trying to do the best of my ability as a man, you know, to help the creature, you know. The sense of animal was come, the outcome of coming in, I don't know, you know, but only thing I'm trying to do is communicate with the people so we can get together and help the animal get back to its mother, you know? Because at first we had it on the beach, you know, and just watching it and wishing on a fantasy it could die, you know, through dehydration, you know? We as humans can survive out here in the world of oxygen, you know, and maintain this. But the animals of the fish world, they can't exist and survive when we can survive, you know? So it's two different worlds. Me and my uncle, we saw a whale because two people were trying to get it and then put it back when it kept coming to shore. And then this other man um, was trying to get it and then to bring it back and it, it, it always came back to shore. And then I got a towel and then we just put it on it and then we um, put some water on it. And we just started taking care of it, petting it and all that stuff. And then the people came here and then they started bringing them to the, to, to the deep end. The dolphin, for me, is the spirit of the wild, you know, a spirit of freedom. You can feel that there's a connection between humans and dolphins.